Hi, I'm Darren and this is Ananda and Orn. Today we're at one of our local markets. We're gonna do some shopping, maybe grab some snacks, show you how to cook one of our favorite meals. Let's go. Hey, This is Al Nang Market. I'll put all the details for the market in the description below the video. Okay, first stop, five baht sausages on sticks. They don't last very long. For some. And one for me. We often come to market so these for our weekly shopping. The food is very fresh and there's heaps of variety here. You can get pretty much everything you could possibly want in the way of food. All sorts of seafood, herbs and spices, vegetables. These markets are a great place to try some real Thai food as well. There's heaps of street food and all sorts of other local specialties. One's found a red icy slushy drink that she wants. How's that? Good? Mm, I might have a try of that one. Mm. Cool, Mark. Yeah, it's very sweet. Very cool, nice and refreshing. <laughs> Alright, let's go shopping. Okay, next, some Canom Croc, little coconut puddings. Get a 20 baht tray of those. These are very tasty, definitely something you should try in Thailand. Hot. Hot, yeah. <laughs> Grab one of them as well. Mmm, delicious. Smell coconut, not sweet. Oh, medium sweet. <laughs> yeah, kind of a bit savoury. Crunchy shell, nice coconut flavour. They're much better when they're warm if you find them making them fresh. Very, very yummy. They pour a rice flour mix in first and then top it with a coconut milk mix, which sets like a kind of firm jelly. They're often topped with corn and green onion and stuff. And Nanda's decided shopping trips for him. What are you seeing that you want? Tuk Tuk. On the yellow one. Oh, what's that? Wow. He's also got these, which are very good. Oh, now Mum's seen something she wants. Hello Kitty fan. This is not much cool, not this one. Oh, this one cool, wow. Yes, we already have one like that though. They're definitely a worthwhile investment in Thailand for when you're walking around. So today, Orn's gonna show us how to make Pad Kaprao. I'm sure you would have all heard about the kids who were lost in a cave recently. When the first batch of them came out, they requested this dish. This is Orn's favorite herb shop. We're gonna do a bit of shopping here, grab some stuff. Start with garlic, One. chilies, long beans, 10 baht for those. 32 baht. 32 baht for that. We're going to get some stock powder here. How much for that one? 12 baht. 12 baht. This little herb shop here has a critical ingredient. Prow Thai holy basil. Also got this one. 
I learned the name of recently. Not an easy one to say. Next stop, the chicken shop. We're gonna get one chicken breast. 40 baht for that. All right, that's our shopping. Let's go home and cook. Well, we're back home and we have assembled all the ingredients that we're going to need here and the cooking equipment. So what are we going to do first? Pound the chili. Okay. Chilies which have been washed. How many chilies? Five. Five chilies. Oh, really spicy. Very spicy. This one is usually a spicy dish. Pound chili first, and when chili mash, mash put garlic. Okay. Garlic next. We're going to use one clove of that straight in there whole. Now we'll make chicken. We got the chicken whole. So we can show you what Thai people do when they don't have a mincer. We're going to mince this by hand. Take the skin off. And we're going to slice it thinly. And then Horn is going to chop this. minced chicken. Next, the long beans. We're going to chop them. Three. In How do you say three of those? How do you say long beans in Thai? Tua Phak Yao. Tua Phak Yao. <laughs> Sounds a bit naughty. <laughs> and then finally, the caprao. We're going to take the leaves off of that. This is the crucial ingredient in this dish. It's Thai holy basil, which is called caprao. It can be a bit tricky to find this outside of Thailand, but I managed to find it in Australia at a few Asian grocery stores, and it's pretty easy to grow as well. You should be able to buy seeds online. You can also take the stem and stick that in the ground, and a lot of them will regrow as well. Handy tip there for the botanists. We've got the leaves from seven stems there. Heated a non-stick wok over a medium heat. And I'm just gonna add oil. That's two teaspoons of oil. And this is another crucial ingredient for this dish. An egg. It's normally served with an egg on the side, fried egg. We're gonna cover the egg just to get him to cook through a bit quicker. The egg's looking nicely done. I'm gonna put that on some absorbent paper to let him drain. Next, into the same pot, the garlic and chili mix. It's going to be fried until it's fragrant, doesn't take very long. You can smell that now. Then the chicken. And then we're adding 100 mils of water. Flatten that out. I think we're done now. Okay, so that's cooked through. Then the beans go in. One teaspoon of stock powder. And five tablespoons of oyster sauce. And then we're gonna mix that through. Then we're gonna add the holy basil, the caprao, and turn off the gas. And mix that through. This one does look a bit wetter than we usually have it because of the wok that we're using. We're not using a traditional wok, we're using a non-stick wok so that we can keep the amount of oil down. But in a traditional wok, that water would evaporate. This does look and smell great though. There we 
we have it. Got the truck brown dye. One more ingredient, some soy sauce on the egg, and that is now done. The taste test. Get on to try this. Spicy? No? Medium. Medium spicy? Good, I know. Well, this looks and smells really good. I'll give myself a big spoon. Mm. On dry, it's not overly spicy. It is a bit sweet, a little bit salty. Nice blend of flavors in there, and the basil has a great taste as well. Here, if I had more hands, I'd give it three thumbs up. Thanks to our chef on for our pad caprao guy kai dao. Very, very yummy. Try this one out at home. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.